Patrice, girl, you out here buying these million dollar homes and you thought that these folks wasn't gonna notice? Child, please. Y'all don't know what time it is. I got the black bean neck on. What's going on, y'all? I. Why am I saying what's going on like I ain't already did that? Black Lives Matter founder Patrice Collier, so I'm thinking that's her name, $1.4 million dollar home draws criticism, calls for investigation. What is funny about this is I was just on a YouTube conference call with Patrice last month. Just, I was just on a conference call listening to her uh, like she was getting paid by YouTube to speak to us. Uh, <laughs> as the founder of Black Lives Matter and then come to find out sis is out here buying like buying a one not just one 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 point four million dollars it's been alleged that she bought multiple homes like she bought one in the Caribbean she bought one somewhere else like who I'm gonna read this is coming from Yahoo News the, the head of Black Lives Matter of Greater New York is calling for an investigation into Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Collier's over million dollar real estate purchase she made in recent years. Collier's 37 has reportedly purchased four high-end homes for 3.2 million in the U.S. alone. Yeah. Per New York Post, including property in a mostly white area of Topanga Canyon in Los Angeles County for 1.4 million dollars. When we are just getting off of dragging Tamika Mallory for, you know, out here doing Cadillac commercials, y'all making all this money off the off the backs of these folks who are deceased and their their, their, their parents are still alive and these folks are struggling. Like they like they y'all like, this is a mess. And then somebody tweeted and somebody responded and said. I can't remember who it was, but it's like, what did y'all expect? Like, she's not supposed to be poor. She's supposed to make a little bit of money. And they are perfectly explaining what a lot of, like, um, organizers have been talking about is, like, people who are making money off of the movement. People who are being paid these speaking gigs by Shell, by, um, you, like, YouTube, doing all of these things, like, getting paid by these corporations to, to, to check their quota. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're doing work with Black Lives Matter. And that's what's trash about this is Black Lives Matter wrote, raised ninety million dollars last year after all them things was going on. Nothing got done. Nothing. We still like even just this weekend alone, we've seen three. Like we are experiencing so much trauma this weekend, and we might as well be kicking down doors right now, okay? Because that's already happening up in um, up north right now. Because we just had another black person being killed in the hands of police. Deontay. And I'm thinking when I saw the post on Instagram, when one of my followers posted it, I'm thinking that's their cousin. I'm saying, oh my gosh, this is sad. Then I get on Twitter, it's trending. And I'm seeing now that this police officer hand slipped a, a veteran police officer who's been on the force 26 years, mistaken her, her gun, like, for her taser. After 26 years, ain't nothing, let me, let me go ahead and say this. Nothing will change until we abolish the police. There is not enough dash cams, body cameras, police training. You cannot change the system. It is impossible. It will not change. There will be more. There have been more. And we're talking about some say their names. Honestly, I'm going to be completely honest. There are so many names that I can't even keep up. I was so triggered watching that video of that, that, that army officer who was in an SUV being pulled over and being talked crazy. I have literally been there. Literally been there. I was in the army for seven and I think seven years and it was the worst experience in my life dealing with being around constant racist white folks all the time. I would never go back. What sister said, I ain't going back. You can't make, I would never go back. I was so glad to get out of that hellhole. 
that was the most stressful shit I have ever been around. And I remember to this day, me and my best friend at the time were in training. We was in full uniform. We were doing something for the army. We was like transporting some folks to go get their cars. We drove them to go get their cars because we was in there some. We was at some training site, and I, we drove our cars. We, we was like, "Girl, I'm driving my car." Out. So the place that we would like from Memphis to somewhere in Tennessee was like a two hour and a half drive. So everybody else had to be bused and all that. So they said, "Hey, we ain't got the buses. The buses late. Take these folks to their car." So we drove to another site to get these folks' cars. They drove their cars and stuff. So, after we dropped him off or doing whatever, me and her are driving back to where we're supposed to go, and we passed this truck on the road. The truck was like a regular pickup truck, you know, heavy duty something. We, we passed him. That truck followed us for 20 minutes on the road. I know it's about a good 20, 30 minutes. And I kept telling her, I was like, girl, this is crazy as hell. This man is really following us. What's going on? Next thing we know, we got a, car, a cop car come behind us and come pull us over and write us a ticket for passing somebody who was not who was an on off-duty police officer. Police officer had so much pull that he called off-duty, while he's off-duty, called his friend to come follow us to write us a ticket. That in itself is power. That is power. For you to be pulling up to me, receive a call from your friend to come write me a ticket where you, you didn't even see the thing, you going off and pulling up to me with a gun and all of that to write me a ticket for passing your friend is power. It is white supremacy and we cannot change it. We cannot until we abolish it. That's it. Point blank period. I, I know folks are like, well, what are we going to do with the police is gone? What are we going to do? Da, da, da. Yes. I think some of those are definitely some valid questions. But ask yourself this. What crimes are the police stopping when they ain't doing them to come and report stuff that already has happened? Like, we really got a thing. So, like, me and my friend was on the side of the road in darkness, pulled over on the side of the road for two, three hours for passing an off-duty police officer in full uniform. I could have, me and her could have, either one of us could have been dead for reaching in our car or doing anything. Wrote us a ticket for two, three hundred dollars for passing in a no passing lane. And now you got black, you got black folks being pulled over and killed in the hands of police for tags being out and, 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 and license plate being out and, and, and this and that. Some of the most silly shit, some of the most pettiest crimes are black folks are losing their lives off of. Like it's just ridiculous. Like it, we, it has to be something. It has to be something better. So I, my, I was so triggered watching that boy being sprayed, pepper sprayed, and then white police officer talking to him crazy because it, to them it's just like you disrespect. You cannot change. Once them folks get that badge, they are empowered. They think everybody is against them. Everybody is against. They have to hold the law. They have to hold folks accountable. And what y'all really is doing is protecting property, property and profits. That's it. You ain't really doing shit. And it's just really sad. So to see, you know, Patrice out here buying million dollar homes in different areas. And you got these black mothers that are out here grieving their children. And these folks out here making money. Like, y'all are some poverty pimps. And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like, it's really... And what's funny about this... It's Patrice was trying to like keep her address from not being leaked online, and folks was out here saying yes, her address don't need to be leaked online because someone might pull out and hurt her. Come to find out that she was really trying to keep her address from like, being uh, posted online, so she wouldn't, so folks wouldn't see how much their houses are worth. Like this is crazy. This is crazy. Um, in a statement provided to the GRIO, Black Lives Matter Global Network responds to concerns regarding Collier's earnings from, from the organization. Patrice Collier is executive director of Black Lives Matter Global Network. She serves in the role as a volunteer capacity and does not receive a salary or benefits. Patrice has received a total of $120,000 since the organization's inception in 2013 for duties such as serving spokesperson and engaged in political education work. Patrice did not receive any compensation after 2019. As a person who know a little bit about nonprofits, that's I, I don't know about the girl. Like, girl, no ma'am. Sis, to abundantly clear, as a registered 501c3, Black Lives Matter Global Network Fund cannot and did not commit any 
organization resources toward the purchase of personal property by any employer or volunteer and in any situation or assertion to their contrary is categorically false. So, but she considers herself a Marxist. Um, like this is just, this just ain't it. Like it's just, it's just not it. Like she's getting paid, even if, it, even if Black Lives Matter go before ain't paying for this stuff, like she out here getting speaking engagement, she's doing all these things, like she is making money. Off, she would not be making money as she was. She would not be out here making money had it not been from these the deaths of these folks. That's the whole reason why Black Lives Matter was founded. So it's just like y'all. What are y'all pushing for? What are y'all pushing for? Like it's just. It, it, Ooh, girl, it, it, it's too much. I, I I can't even gauge in it. I, I just I can't. Like when I saw that, I said, "You have got to be kidding me. You have got to be no mutual aid, just out here." Four homes, girl, totaling $3.2 million. Woo, talking about Patrice and, and it stressed me out, girl. Let's move on. Um, girl, Kid Cudi showed up to Saturday Night Live and performed in a white dress. I am, I'm so tired. Like, I'm so tired of cis hetero straight men. Like, girl, I'm bored. <laughs> like, girl, I am bored. I am bored <laughs> with this. It's just not revolutionary. It's not. It's like it's not really doing anything. It's cute. It's just like until like until like non-binary folks to femme folks, uh, gender non-conforming folks, all these folks are able to do these things without being harassed. I don't want to see no cis hetero man. I just don't want to see. It's, it, it's doing absolutely nothing for me. And the dress was ugly as hell. <laughs> the dress might even fit it right. Girl, it's just like oh my gosh, it's breaking news. It's about as breaking as sh shit hangs. Just got through harassing this black woman who he's in a relationship with, who, who called him out on several things of abuse and some stuff, and now he out here doing a song to my some white girls, white white boy summer. We already had this when y'all was marching with them them, um, them tiki's and them khaki pants and stuff. So no ma'am, there is no white boy summer. He out here dancing with the black women. Got the, I guess just it was disgusting to watch. The whole video had no smell to it because it was no seasoning to it. It was just just this white man dancing around. Like raw chicken. I hate it so much. I just, I really can't stand it, man. And I really, him and his Jamaican fake ass, Jamaican accent, I hate it so much. Moving on, I'm gonna drag everybody. I'm just dragging the hell out of men. Kyrie Irving talking about some stop using the N word. Child, fuck you. I'm so, I'm like, shut the hell up. You need to be worried about them white women on them boats that you be having. Like, ain't, ain't no NBA player finna be out here telling us what we can't say when y'all around here tap dancing and listening to music like that with a bunch of white women who are sitting here calling y'all. Give me that nigga cock. Girl, go sit down, girl. We're not taking you serious. Kyrie Irving, go please. Go sh the entire up. Please. Okay? Moving on. Other um person. Nick Cannon apparently got some twins coming by another woman. Um, I don't even know her name. I'm not even gonna say her name. I don't even care. Nick Cannon got 20 kids, and everybody's like, oh yeah, he planted his seed. He out here doing something. Nick Cannon is out here having babies with all these women. He needs to be having them in one place so he can take her. He needs to be out here with these children watching them. That's what he needs to be doing. Because if, if you ain't doing nothing but out here having cheer, that ain't that ain't no legs, that ain't no nothing. Like you have like Nick can't act like he really out here doing something. He's still on that whole tip shit. I'm not Dr. Sebi, like I just I, I Ooh, Nick can't get on my nerves. Uh, he just gets on my nerves. Like it just people praising him for having children. Like Praise these women for out here taking care of these kids. This man, is he at the house? And then his advice for having all these children, you know, get you some sleep. Bro, you need to be running through everybody's house like a crash dummy and taking care of these children. That's what you need to be worried about. Nothing else. Um, so I, I just, I don't get that at all. Also, Jay-Z and Beyonce's folks had to come out and say that they did not pay for DMX. Um, you know, they didn't buy his mask. I, I know B, B and J get tired every time. Folks be saying, oh, B and J bought somebody mouth. B and J and Jay-Z ain't did none of that shit. <laughs> they ain't did none of that shit. I bet B and J, like, leave us out of this shit. We right here on JJ the jet plane. Please leave us out of that. What else is going on? Cheryl Underwood came back. They was on the talk. And um, they finally discussed the whole situation. What happened with Miss Sharon Osborne? Um, they had this um, this pretty good guy on there. I can't think of his name, but he was out. Uh, he was like a... You know, I can't think like a therapist or something. He was giving something, but he was—he really engaged the conversation and asked how Cheryl felt, how she was feeling after all of the things. 
Um, Sharon said that girl, she did text her and Cheryl did not respond. And Cheryl said, girl, she didn't respond because the shit was under investigation. She didn't want to know how to do anything. So Cheryl said, in that moment, she was not sure how to respond. She did not want to be coming off as the angry black woman. I definitely understand that, Cheryl. I definitely understand. Um, so she chose her balance. She said she didn't want to come off. She didn't want to do too much. And she said she was hurt because she thought that was her friend. Which goes and reiterate, because I, I literally have to tell folks, like, racism comes first. Period. So if you out here thinking that you, because your white friend is out here cool with you, ain't saying nothing, that don't mean shit. Like, and, and it's not my job to make white people feel comfortable about not being racist. That is your job. That is your job. I'm not to be out here creating a safe space. And I'm not saying you can't have white friends, but be cognizant. Be understanding that racism comes first. So don't be surprised that your white friend has said something or done something that's problematic. Because honestly, when they be trying not to and doing it, it's really a performance. They have to do everything in their they power to not. But even in that, they still are afforded privileges in that. And I'm not, I'm not one of the folks going to say, there's some good white people out here. I'm not saying that. I don't have time to be wasting out here being a campaign and saying there's good white people. When there's enough white people out here putting all of our asses in the dirt with their whole system. They ain't even got to be present. They, 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 the supremacy is definitely forever present. So I'm not interested in being no campaign. So I, I, I feel for Cheryl thinking that Sharon was her friend. She was never your friend to begin with, sis. And she true, and she was an evil ass woman, come to find out. So girl, that, that whole situation is a hot flaming mess. I hope Cheryl heals from that. I hope the talk moves on from that. I knew the talk wouldn't bring her ass back. I said, girl, this would be so confrontational, too much. Cause they like this would be going on for days had Sharon came back, girl. Like they would have had to talk about it. And it would have been so awkward. It would have been so awkward. But I do think that the talk did a good job of engaging the conversation, starting the conversation, having it, and moving on. So they might actually maybe watch an episode or two of the talk. Maybe. But that is all I got to talk about right now. I love y'all so much. I hope y'all enjoyed this King of Reese video. We got a lot of things. Out. Um, make sure you are following me on Patreon. I already told y'all for folks who are following me on Patreon, you will be able to watch the Real Housewives of Atlanta season 13 reunion party with me. I will be doing a virtual watch party, period. So um, everybody who's following me on Patreon will be um, able to engage in that. I love y'all so much. Until next time, I'll talk y'all later tonight. Bye.